We want to push off the real estate, not be part of it. We're buying revenue. That's all we're doing. You don't have to know the words. Okay, when you talk about it, the accounts never gave a fucking perspective. It's, it's, I've been doing this 50 years. But you're paying overtime when you work on the weekends. And that's why many surgeons don't work on the weekends. But I mean, the uh, the profit margin in, in vascular surgery is pretty pretty big. But where a surgery that he used to get $18,000, where now he gets 9000 Because the insurance companies have cut back in payouts dramatically. Um, the uh, But that's one of the reasons why he didn't continue in the... Uh, vascular um, surgery uh, roll up. Um, but in medicine, the hottest thing is telemedicine. Telemedicine, for a lot of obvious reasons, yeah. Yeah, yeah. In the case we've seen, so no business card, no website, no fancy, or executive summary, an email, phone, everything. Why don't you, I, you know, I can just see your uh, website in Spanish now. I, I can just see it now, a thing of beauty, you know? And I, I can just see your business cards with little flowers and shit around. I mean, uh, all, all, why? The answer is no. That you don't. Your board's gonna want a website. Your board's gonna want business cards. And then you, you, you find. I said you go find another board then. And you know, I say that because I really that's how I talk. You will not tell your industry expert to go find another company if you want a website. There's a lot of bets I'll make in this room, and that's one of them. <laughs> I mean. Because, not because you don't, you're not thinking it, not because you don't have the balls to say it, but it's so far akin from how you've been trained, you just, you wouldn't do it. Well, what is a website um, other than uh, marketing propaganda for a startup new code with no money? What is it going to say? What is it going to say more than you said on your executive summary? Nothing. I'm, I'm just telling you the, uh, um, but he's, he, uh, he's, he came out of that stable. We've gone back. How did we feed those guys? You know, what did I cut? Because that group that he was a part of, Josh Kim and the guy that uh, stole the $245 million, all came out of the same group. And we've gone back. I've looked at the slides. You know, maybe we, we, we put something in the food or... Uh, because that we, that's the highest portion of superstars we've ever had in one seminar. In one seminar. And I don't know, I was just... And um, none of them, their communication skills aren't... I don't know, super salesmen in the group. But they, they, had, they had super results. They had super results. And uh, yes, sir. Did you say he sold his own business to... He bought his own practice. For his own practice through seller's finance. Correct. Correct. And commercial debt. Commercial debt. And uh, he's not there. I mean, we've got a lot of guys that have bought their own business. Uh, I normally recommend it be your first purchase because ideally you can get it done the quickest because you're on both sides of the transaction. If you're an engineer, that doesn't mean shit because you can fuck it up on both sides of the transaction. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But normally if you're buying, hey, I know you, you're me. I'm buying from you and yeah, I know you. Uh, but sometimes it works out perfectly and sometimes it works out all fucked up. Uh, but, and now you've got a deal. Now you don't have to worry about that anymore. Um, and you've gotten paid normally full price combination. You've been able to pull some money out. Um, and it, it works terrific. It works terrific. And the, um, and uh, he, but he didn't do it the first. That, that uh, cl clinic that he showed the picture of was the first. Um, and now this perception is reality slide. Uh, you can tell I'm the one on the right on the top, but I'm the one on the left on the bottom. Perception is reality. You see the top picture, it looks like three old guys at a retirement dinner, which it was. The three old guys at a 50 year reunion. Below, uh, we're being recruited. We have volunteered into the army on, that's May 21st, or excuse me, June 21st, 1966. And that line sergeant equivalent was lying to us. He recruited us in on a buddy plan. The Army and the Navy and the Marine Corps said, you three guys can go as buddies and you're going to serve in the same stations for your career in the military. That picture was the last time I saw those two guys for years. Which one's in construction? No, one's in jail, right? No, 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 no. These guys are the guys that I still know. Uh oh. That are, you know, oh, okay. I, oh no, the guy on the left, uh, uh, retired construction, German, the t uh, Wojak's his name. The guy in the middle, retired casino executive. And then me, and then that's us as kids. You know, we were all 20 years old there, and uh, the uh, and that lying piece of shit. Um, and then when you talk to uh, recruiters, we we tell everybody we're still selling off the buddy plan. And the last time you saw him is when they took the picture of you. I didn't see him for years after that, for fucking years. And uh, they ought to do a fucking expose about the military. But anyway, perception is reality. I mean. When you, co you know, the way we're dressed down below, even though we weren't dressed like bums, we're going to get a different response if we had been wearing suits. If we had been wearing suits like we are uh, above. The, um, 
But any comments about questions about Joe? Yes, sir. Uh, really? He said uh, he's buying revenue. So he means he's buy, not buying assets. That's, that's basically no, he's buying. No, he's buying revenue because we're in the revenue buying business, guys. Right. We want to push off the real estate, not be part of it. We're buying revenue. That's all we're doing. There's nothing else to push off. Well, no, there is a lot of times the revenue is going to be associated with real estate. But uh, let me take a lease on that. Let me take an option, a 10-year option with, uh, to buy in three years. If I, okay. You don't want to use up your powder on property because the property is going to increase the EBITDA you're paying for it because of the value it brings. If you buy a million dollar business with a million dollar property, that means you're buying a two million dollar asset and the cash flow probably just barely covers the one million so you want to push off push off and that you do that by asking or demanding for that matter you just walk away fine it's a great business but i mean when you when uh, and they want you to buy the real estate they see they built the building bespoke building uh thinking that someday that when they sold the business they could keep the building as an inc as extra income and that's exactly what you tell them fine we'll increase the rent 20 percent. you keep the property and i have an option to buy it in three to five years and normally you, 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 they'll do that because you're not cheating them there's nothing wrong with it he increased the lease pardon he, the lease on the property you sign a big well i'm sure he's going to increase the lease he's not going to get but you know sometimes the real problem is he doesn't own the building the property guy down the street owns the building he doesn't tell the property guy that he's selling his practice now you've sold the practice and on almost all leases is a change of ownership clause if there's more than a 50 percent change of ownership you know the 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 lease is null and void so now you got to go back to the lease the owner of the building and renegotiate the lease after you've already bought the fucking building you're fucked so you've got to tell the 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 uh, dental or the uh, medical in this particular uh, case medical professional you I want you to go to the <coughs> owner of the billing and renegotiate the lease because once they see it's you and you've got no alternative they're gonna bend you over just like a, a good Dutchman they're gonna bend you over so you want the current tenant to renegotiate renegotiate the lease you want an extension for five years you'll tell them um, but uh, several of the kids unfortunately even though I've, I say this in the seminar and it's in the in the thumb drive you know they um, the seller doesn't want to tell the landlord because then he's going to have to tell the employees. A lot of these deals you're going to buy, they're not telling their employees until the day the fucking thing closes because they're afraid the employees will get nervous, leave, steal. In Italy, mostly steal, not leave. And um, but, but, and so one of the questions you've got in your uh, quality of earnings, have the employees or uh, other business partners been notified that you're selling? And they'll lie to you. Can't believe it, huh? They'll lie to you and say yes. And then you, you'll say, but I'd like to double check, uh, you know, can I, I just pick any three employees? And then they'll say, well, no. And then they'll back up and retrench. But if the employees don't know, see, when they know, then you can start your selling pitch, how they're going to get equity, how they're going to get cash bonuses, and they're going to want to stay. If you close on Friday and open up in your name on Monday, if anybody shows up, I'm surprised. But what the seller is worried about, if you tell them six weeks before, They'll steal it. Well, this is a slight exaggeration. They'll steal everything or they'll misdirect uh, patients, which all happens. They'll cut a deal with another, you know, doctor. Every patient I send you, you know, I get 200 bucks or whatever. Yeah. Could you go over a little, in a little bit more detail what equity the employees of the acquired company will get? And what? No, no. Uh, well, there's, there's several ways to do it. The easiest way is to put together a 10% stock option plan. The employee stock option plan, 10%. And that 10% comes one of two ways. You either dilute everybody 10% or because you're rich, you're a rich, uh, beneficent Chinese person, you take 10% out of yours. We know what they're going to do, right? They're going to dilute everybody 10%, okay? Oh, the black man's laughing back here. Oh, you're a rich, beneficent black guy. You know which way it's going to go, right? You're going to take, yeah. But I mean, so it comes. So what you do is you issue, let's, if you've got a million shares, you issue another 100,000 shares, you put it in, in the employee stock option plan, okay? And then for employees to stay a year or more, they get some pro rata uh, amount of the shares. Um, the, um, and when they, now, now they have nothing. Now, I got asked a few uh, weeks ago, or uh, no, a few months ago, how do you know they, they've got no ownership in the company? Because I've been doing this almost 50 years and I've yet to see anybody have any ownership that the regular owner had would give the employees. So 
Uh, they're always the first, and but so I know they won't, and I know they'll be impressed. And the, the way you get their attention, remember, financial motive must prevail. When they find out that um, they're going to be uh, able to join, and it's not, you, you don't make them join the stock option plan. It's voluntary. But when they see, there's no downside to being in it. We're going to give you stock, and if you, if you buy options... We'll double it. You don't have to buy them, but if you do, we'll match it. There's no downside. It's really a built-in savings plan, and a lot of people like that. A lot of people like that, um, and it's 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 the right thing too. And I'm not a right thing kind of guy too. I'm, I'm doing shit just for it's the right thing, but it is the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do. Did I answer your question? Yes, sir. It was another question. Okay. Uh, anything else about? Um, Joe, yes, sir. At some point, he mentioned something from the accounting firm to get a prospect. Okay, he was he's using the wrong words. He used the word, we're going to raise in capital. He didn't raise a dime. He means borrow, okay? You don't have to know the words. Okay, and when he talk about it, the accounts never gave a fucking perspective. It's, 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 I've been doing this 50 years. It's just a word he picked out of, you know, maybe it's, uh, he saw it in a magazine or something, but there are no prospectuses. What he's talking about is the proposal that KPMG gave him to do delayed fees. He then gave it to the lawyers. Then the lawyers think, well, shit, uh, KPMG uh, is on board and has done due diligence, so we'll be on board. But it's not a prospectus. There is no prospectus, okay. But I mean, so far, everybody that's talked has used the wrong words. No matter how successful they've been, when I, t I know that's not how you've been taught in life. But, you know, when you learn the 25 or 30 phrases that you're gonna get tomorrow afternoon, you know, and remember, you answer no matter what the question, what time is it, number three? Okay, uh, uh, do you think uh, uh, global warming's for uh, for real? Number eight. Uh, uh, do you think Trump's going to be reelected? Number four. I mean, you're just same answers, and and uh, you'll you'll do well. You'll do well because they only have about 15 phrases that they use. The bankers. The um, yeah, but I mean, it's it's it's, it's simple. I mean, um, it's simple. Another comment? Yes, sir. Um, I've already got a great relationship with my law firm. Continue that relationship? Or? Well, I mean, is, uh, is it on a delayed fee basis? No. Well, they'll never switch to delayed fees. Those of you that have lawyers and accountants, if you can convince, and you've been paying them, if you can convince them for a delayed fee basis, please let me know, because that'll be a first. Because there's no reason for them, you two years, five years, or 46 years, you've been paying them, for them to all of a sudden to go to the uh, uh, the management committee of their partnership and say, oh yeah, uh, we're now switching to a delayed fee basis where the risk is all on us. That's not, this not gonna happen. It's not because they're not great lawyers, that has nothing to do with it. But unless you wanna pay these guys, uh, you, you can give them the opportunity, but I've never seen anybody accept it. And then they're gonna say, okay, how many deals? And you're going to say uh, the, uh, well, you want it uncapped. They're going to say they'll cap it. Uh, but normally the delayed fees are capped at three transactions, three failed transactions. If you fail on three, then they say they can't do any more work for you. You go out and do transactions and you come back to them w with a successful transaction. Do you use those outside lawyers as your personal lawyers? No, you, ha you should always have separate lawyers. That's a good, good question for the wrong reason. Okay, you should always have your own per safe personal lawyer. Always personal, your own personal lawyer that's representing you. I went to a board meeting uh, a few months ago. We got great representation. We're there for the first meeting, like you know, we talk about, and I walk in with my own lawyer, and uh, the uh, and uh, company lawyers wanted to know why. Two of the board members wanted to know why, and uh, and then uh, Tim, he's you know I. They, they wanted to know, you know, when they're, they, uh, when the meetings open up, you stand up, my name's Dan, and you talk a little bit about yourself, and then Joe, I'm a, a lawyer partner, but when it gets around to Tim, he says, well, I, I, I've represented Dan for decades, and I'm here to make sure that, uh, that he's around for me to represent for more decades. The, uh, that, that, was, uh, that was his introduction. Uh, but um, the, um, yeah, you always want your own lawyer, and you pay for your own lawyer out of your pocket, not out of the company's pocket which will be a strange occurrence for some of you, if not all of you. Yeah. Did he win some meetings with you? No, no, I, the last board meeting. Not, okay. No, the penultimate, the second to the last board meeting I went with to, to one of you guys, uh, not you guys, but I mean a mentee uh, in Los Angeles. I brought my own lawyer because there were some sticky uh, subjects. Because some of the banks uh, are going to tell you they want all the directors to sign. Some of the banks 
will tell you they want financials on all the directors. Some of the banks will say that we want uh, everybody more than 20% to guarantee the note. That's pretty much, uh, uh, there's no coincidence why I always have 19% uh, because 20% seems to be the threshold. Uh, uh, and when they say that you want uh, the director's uh, financials, fuck off. When they say that they want the director's tax returns, fuck off. When they say they want the directors to guarantee, fuck off. Uh, you'll soften it up, but remember, you didn't recruit these guys to show their net worth tax returns. You recruited them for their expertise. Um, but some of the banks, it's in their playbook. Um, but normally that'll be a young, inexperienced banker because nobody that's got a half a brain that's on a board is going to guarantee any fucking corporate debt. Once in a while, I may, maybe there are some idiots running around, but I've not, I haven't met one any time or any recently. Um, but they will just, they're on the other side. If you don't ask, you don't get. But I mean, the truth of the matter is when you, most of you that don't have any assets, you guarantee these notes, it means nothing. A guy that's got a $20,000 net worth guaranteeing a $5 million debt, I mean, it's not worth anything, you know? Josh Kim and his 15-speed bicycle, what's that guarantee worth? Uh, how much does a 15-speed bicycle uh, racing bike cost? A couple grand? Five. Oh, five, five. It was worth more than I thought it was. We, we should have put that bike down, Josh. <laughs> you know? The uh, five, fuck, I don't know, it would cost that kind of, but, but you could, it only weighed like two pounds or three pounds, I mean, it was really light, yeah. Anyway, well, now he's big, now, now he's living large, like I want you to live large. From a 15 speed bicycle to a million dollar race car, that's a quantum fucking leap. Uh, but I, you know, that's, that's a good, we got a lot of good stories, but. In your account, and you say it's probably the same thing. Pardon? In your account, and you say it's probably the same thing with the obviously. Yeah, but you want two different accountants on the board. You want one to be CFO, and you want another one, you want two. Remember, two industry experts. It's probably even better to have two lawyers, two accountants, one of which would be uh, the CFO. Uh, your CEO and chairman might be a lawyer. I like two because you want second opinions. And in fact, what you really want is when your law firm says something, you want both lawyers on your team to say the same thing. So you really got three opinions. You want, you know, because it's your neck, guys. You're the one that has 60 or 70% of this thing. And it all goes down the fucking toilet. You're the one that loses. I mean, uh, even if you cut this pie up all screwy, uh, you're gonna have 60%. You're gonna have 60%. And you, what did you put in? Nothing. Now, that doesn't mean just because you didn't put in anything and you put in nothing, doesn't mean you deserve nothing. And some people will argue that. And I, I needless to say, I, uh, I hope I don't have to tell you to tell them to fuck off, you know, or however you say fuck off, you know. We, you know. I've, I've taken it into, I used to have a guy, I've taken your suggestions into consideration, Mr. Pena. And at the best of times, I would think that your ideas are ludicrous. Yes. At worst of times, I think that you're crazy. That was his way of telling me, to, uh, English guy, that was his way of telling me, fuck off, Dan. I'm not, you know, where you, what are you smoking, Dan? You know, that's the equivalent of me saying, what are you smoking? Give me some of that shit. Uh, we have the slides, right? The,